Hi friends, welcome to Happy Nursing. This is Ila. In our previous video, we discussed about the personal system of Imogen King's goal attainment theory. Today, we will discuss about the interpersonal and the social system. Interpersonal means when more than one personal systems come in contact. When a nurse interacts with the patient, it becomes an interpersonal system. Not only nurse to patient, it can be patient to patient, nurse to nurse. It can contain even more than two persons. When two persons are interacting, it's called a dyad. When three persons are interacting, it's called a triad. And when four or more than that are interacting among themselves, it's called a group. Don't we say group study, group discussion, like that. Now we will look at the concepts under interpersonal system. First one is interaction. Interactions are defined as the observable behaviors of two or more individuals in mutual presence. For example, a nurse is providing care to a patient or she is administering medicines to a patient or she is talking to a patient and the patient responds accordingly. So there are behaviors of both the nurse and the patient which can be observed from outside. Interaction means not always talking. It's actually any behavior that can be observed by others from outside. Next is communication. King defines communication as a process whereby information is given from one person to another either directly in a face-to-face -face meeting or indirectly through tele telephone, television or the written word. So when there is an exchange of information, it's called a communication. I don't think any further explanation is needed here. If there is any confusion between interaction and communication, then just remember all communications are interactions. But there is one difference between the two. There is an exchange of information in communication, which is not necessary in interaction. Okay. For example, you are giving back care to a patient. There is an interaction, but no communication. Suddenly the patient says you, there is an injury on my back sister, please be careful. It becomes an interaction as well as a communication. I hope this is clear to you. Next is transaction. It is defined as a process of interactions in which human beings communicate with the environment to achieve goals that are valued. That is goal directed human behaviors. What does that mean? See, suppose a patient has come to the hospital and you are the nurse assessing her. So there is an interaction between you and the patient. You took history from the patient and informed the on duty doctor. There was a communication as well as interaction between you and the doctor. Then the patient is admitted. Now there is a goal to cure the patient or to give him relief from whatever symptoms he is suffering. In order to achieve that goal, the healthcare team makes a treatment plan and then begins a series of interactions between you and the patient, which continues for a number of days. What do you do in that process? You give basic cares, administer medicines, daily assess the patient, assist him in daily life activities, take, uh, take him for investigations, counsel him, all these. Why do you do all this? To reach your goal, that is to cure the patient. So these are goal directed behaviors. So all these interactions starting from the day when the patient is admitted till the day the patient is relieved from his symptoms are collectively known as transaction. Same way there was a transaction between you and the treating doctor also. He was giving you orders, you were following it, you were informing and discussing the patient's conditions, all directed to the same goal. So that is transaction. Next is role. King said in a theory, the characteristics of the role include reciprocity. Reciprocity means the practice of exchanging things with others for mutual benefit. A person may be a giver at one time and a taker at another time with a relationship between two or more individuals such as a nurse has a role of giving care towards the patient, not only giving care, counseling, teaching, etc. Again, she has the role of informing to the doctor, discussing about the treatment plan, making suggestions, etc. A patient has his role of informing about the symptoms, whether he is relieved or not, what are his fears, following the advice of doctors and nurses, etc. So we all have our own roles at our own place. Now we will be a giver and also a taker. For example, when we give advice to the patient or do procedure on a patient or inform something to the doctor, we are a giver. 
when the patient is giving us feedback, follows advice and share his fears with us or when we receive any order from the doctor, then we are a taker. So that is all about role. We are remaining with our last concept of interpersonal system that is stress. Stress is a dynamic state whereby a human being interacts with the environment to maintain balance for growth, development and performance which involves an exchange of energy and information between the person and the environment for regulation and control of stressors. Stress is dynamic. Why? Because it keeps on changing. For example, you inform a patient that he will be taken to CT scan in the morning. Then he is stressed. The thought of the CT scan is his stressor which is causing him the tension. What will happen? Will I be alone there? Will they inject me with something? These are his stressors. Now after it's done by evening, his stress will be gone because his CT scan is done now, he is free. So it is dynamic. What else is there? There is an exchange of energy and information between the person and the environment for regulation and control of stressors. And that exchange of energy is done through interaction between the human and environment. Suppose the patient is stressed. Now what will he do? He will pace up in his room. He may cry if he is a child. He may share his fears with you. Then what will you do? You may counsel the patient, help him to understand the need of CT scan, introduce him to other patients who has undergone CT scan. The patient may meditate, talk to other patients. There are several things a patient can do. Listen to music and divert himself. All these are his interactions with the environment in order to control the stressors. That means the fearful thoughts which are going on in his mind. We are done with our interpersonal system. Once again to summarize, the interpersonal system is created when one or more person interacts with each other. It has some major concepts, interaction where there is an observable behavior between two or more persons, communication when there is an exchange of information, transaction a continuous process of interactions directed towards a goal, role, our own responsibilities from our own place where there will be a give and take relationship and stress where we will exchange our energy with the environment in order to control our stressor, something which is disturbing us and it is dynamic in nature. Next is the social system where more than one interpersonal system are involved, they all together form the social system. For example, the group of health professionals in a hospital forms a social system. The students, teachers and other staffs in a school form a social system. The members of a religious group form a social system. Now we will go through the concepts of social system. Our first concept is organization. Organization is a group of people with a particular purpose. For example, like I said, we the nursing professionals are working in a hospital. We have a purpose of serving the patients. So that is our organization. Next is power. Power is the capacity to use resources in organization. Power is a social force that organizes and maintains society. What does that mean? The ability to influence others, order others for certain things, use the resources available in an organization is the power. For example, we all have our nursing supervisor in the hospital. She has the power of control. She distributes our jobs, order others what to do and what not to do. Why is it needed? To avoid chaos and confusion. If certain powers are not there with particular persons, then there will always be confusion regarding our jobs within us. For example, we are being told what our jobs are. If there was nobody to distribute those jobs among us, there would always be chaos within us. Right? Now it's not that the nursing supervisor has the only power. We all have our own powers and there comes the authority. In order to understand the power, we have to understand the authority because both are interrelated. Authority is something related to the position we hold or the decisions we take. All of us don't have the same authority. It depends on our power. For example, if I am a junior nurse, uh, I can do the basic procedures for a patient. right? Now, if the patient tells me uh, he or she is having a problem with my procedure, I can identify that problem and solve it. Now, if the patient says I want to complain against you, I am not satisfied with your career, uh, with your care. What do I have to do? I have to inform my senior. 
because handling that problem is not my authority. Then suppose the patient says he has a problem with the system in our department. Where will that complaint go? To the ward in charge because he or she has the authority to handle this problem. Then suppose the patient says he or she has a problem with the nursing service. Where does it take us? To the nursing superintendent because this is his or her authority. And this authority comes from the power which are given to us by the organization. I hope I am able to clarify. Next is decision making. It is a dynamic and systematic process by which goal directed choice of perceived alternatives is made and acted upon by individuals or groups to answer a question and attain a goal. So it is a systematic process and also dynamic. Why dynamic? Because it also changes according to situations, right? What happens in this system? A goal is involved. We have to decide certain things which will help us to achieve that goal. A question regarding that goal has been raised. There must be some problem or a situation has arrived where we need to take certain decisions. So that situation is referred to the question. For example, a patient is to be discharged on Saturday and after discharge, he or she will fly to another country to his or her home. Now the patient is having a problem. Suppose he or she has a pre-booked ticket of Sunday which cannot be refunded or cancelled. So he or she requests to be discharged on Sunday. So getting discharged is the goal here and he has a problem regarding that. This is his question. Now what to do? There are alternatives. We will look into the different available options to answer the question or to solve the problem. So now the individuals or groups involved here are patient, his family, the nurses and doctors. So they will look into the alternative options. Either the hospital may discharge him on Sunday or the patient may arrange for an accommodation in between. After looking into the options, they will arrive at a decision. Now why it is dynamic? Suppose the patient suddenly managed to get a flight on Saturday. Then the decision may be changed. Okay, so that is decision making. Last one is status. Status is defined as the position of an individual in a group with respect to others and it is accompanied by privileges, duties and obligation. For example, in our nursing organization, we all have certain privileges. We all have our own set of duties. We are obliged to our responsibilities towards the patient, towards the organization. Depending on that, we all have our respective status also. For example, when our nursing supervisor comes to take a class, we all stand up and greet him or her. Good morning, sir or good morning, ma'am. When a nursing staff enters to attend the class, does everyone stand up? No, because we all hold different positions with respect to others and that is our status. So we have learned the concepts of social system. Organization, which is a group of people with a particular purpose, power, the capacity to use the resources of an organization, authority, which is interrelated with power and related to the position we hold or the decisions we take. Then decision making, a dynamic and systematic process to solve problems related to a goal. And lastly, status. Status is the position of an individual in a group with respect to others. I hope I am able to clarify. If you find this video useful, then please like and share this video and subscribe my channel.